All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about the cis-trans isomers, also called geometric isomers, and it's going to be a type of uh, configurational isomer, also called stereoisomers. Another type of configurational isomer is going to be optical isomers. We're not going to be talking about those in this particular video. We're only going to be focusing on cis and trans in this particular um, session. So obviously, if it's an isomer, it's got to have the same formula and uh, geometric isomers will have the same connectivity however they will have a different spatial arrangement and those spatial arrangements cannot be interconverted among one another through the bond rotation and that's because of the restricted rotation you're going to have in those particular compounds and the restriction rotation on those compounds is going to come through the double bond if there is a dull bond or if there is a ring. So obviously if there is a dull bond you can't really rotate it freely like just like you would do for a single bond and if there is a ring you can't rotate it again because of the restriction with the rotation around the ring. So let's take a, some of the examples here. So I have this first one where I got four carbons in the chain so I can go ahead and do Call this one, two, three, four. And to better able to identify whether it's going to be a cis or trans for something that's going to be cis, cis means you're going to have the same grips or similar grips on the same side. And for the trans, you're going to have on the opposite sides. So you can look at the big groups being on the same side or the big groups being on the opposite side and you can obviously take the reference of the small groups if the small groups are on the same side that's going to be a cis and if the small groups are on the opposite sides that's going to be a trans another nomenclature you're going to be probably seeing for the cis and trans is going to be the e and z so cis is going to be the same as z and trans is going to be the same as e and there are times when you strictly use uh, Z and E over cis and trans and that usually applies when you don't have uh, the same type of uh, substituents onto those double bonded or same types of groups onto those double bonded. But a lot of times people do uh, use Z and E to be the same as cis and trans. Okay, so let's just... Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples where you're going to be using only Z and E, but then, I, like I said, you could interconvert those uh, among one another. So in this first one, since I got, uh, that's your methyl group, if it becomes hard, you probably want to go ahead and write down what those groups are. And then around this double bond, the other, car other atom you're going to have on the second and third carbon are going to be your hydrogens. Okay, so you can clearly see the hydrogens being the smaller groups and those methyls being the bigger groups. And around those double bonds, those big groups are on the opposite sides and those small groups are on the opposite side. So you can take a reference off either the small groups or big groups, really doesn't matter. So if those big groups are on the opposite side, then it's going to be a trans. Okay, so this particular one is going to be called trans but 2 in. Okay, when I look at uh, the next example, uh, everything else is the same, one, two, three, four, the double bond position is also the same. However, this one and four, or another way of saying these methyl groups are now all of a sudden on the same side, and these hydrogens are gonna be on the opposite side. And since those methyl groups are on the same side, you can say the big groups being on the same side or the small groups being on the same side, it's going to be actually a cis alkene. So we're going to call this as cis but to in. Everything else stays the same. It's only going to be the first part, the cis and trans, that changes in those geometric isomers. Okay, uh, so like I said, you could also have that in the rings. So let's take this example here. So if I want to name this first one, I would number start from one of those uh, substituents. It's going to be one, two, three. You always want to make sure your substituents gets the lowest number possible. So don't do the other way around. Um, so we have a methyl on the first one and a methyl on the third one. Now you can see the methyl on the first one is actually pointed 
it's coming out of the page. All right, so that's out of the page. And then the metal on the third carbon is going back into the page. And that's what makes it a cis and trans. So this particular one is going to be a trans because those orientations of the CH3 group are opposite to one another. And since the orientation is opposite to one another, that makes it a trans. So this is going to be a trans 1,3-dimethyl. And since it's a uh, hexane, but it's a ring, so it's going to be a cyclohexane. Okay, what about the second one? The only difference you have between the second one and the first one is how your methyl grips are oriented. So these methyl grips now, both of them are coming out of the page. All right, so they're going to be actually cis. So this is going to be cis, and the rest of the part of the name is actually going to be the same. So I can probably just copy that down and just put it right there. So it's just going to be cis 1,3 dimethyl cyclohexane. Now, someone may wonder what if you have a scenario where your compound, oops, so suppose what if you have a very similar scenario but both of those pointed back into the page? Well, that's still going to be the cis because those methyls are in the same orientation. And technically, uh, this molecule A, let's call that A, and this molecule B are actually the same. Because if you do an 180 degrees of rotation, you get to the second molecule. If you rotate it by, flip it by 180, those CH3 is going to be going back into the page. So they're both going to be the cis with respect to one another. Okay, what about uh, something like this? So let's try to do these quickly. I got, uh, when I number this, it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 because you want to make sure your double bond gets the lowest number possible. So you do have um, cis trans or EZ being involved here. And then I can clearly see here onto the second carbon where you have the double bond, one of my grip is CH3 and your other grip is the hydrogen. Well, now E and Z steps in whenever you don't have the same type of grips on the double bond carbons, all right? So in this particular case, the way you wanna break it down, whichever has the higher atomic number is gonna be a higher priority. So another way of saying, if I change the color, this hydrogen is gonna have atomic number of one and the first atom that's going to be connected to this carbon number two is going to be this carbon number one and the atomic number of carbon is six so as soon as you see the breaking point or another way of saying difference in the atomic numbers whichever is going to have a higher atomic number gets the priority in terms of numbering so let's say we're going to call this one this uh, methyl group to be one and this this h to be number two okay we got to do the same thing onto this uh, carbon number three because that's the next uh, or the other double bonded carbon you have. Now, when you go away, obviously you don't have the same groups. So this fluorine is going to be atomic number nine. And the first atom that's going to be bonded to this carbon number three going to the top is going to be the carbon. All right. So you look one atom at a time, so this carbon is going to have atomic number of six. So since fluorine is going to have a higher atomic number than the carbon, fluorine gets the priority over the carbon. So we're going to call the fluorine to be number one and carbon to be number two. Okay, so that's all you really need to know. Now you can clearly see how your big groups or the highest priority groups are on the same side and your lower priority group are on the same side, so this is actually gonna be a cis, all right? So whenever you have a different groups attached around the double bonds, the better name for that is gonna be Z. You don't really call it cis, you wanna call it Z, but people still use it cis. People still use cis versus Z, and they can intermix those uh, between among one another. So the name for this is gonna be 
I got the fluoro on the third carbon, so it's going to be three fluoro. And then I have uh, on the second position, I got a pentene so, or a double bond, so it's going to be two pentene. And you want to make sure you specify whether it's a cis or trans or E or Z. So it's going to be actually a Z or cis, so you want to write down a Z in front of it. And technically, you could also write down cis, that we will see that as well. So I can just copy this down here. So this could also be called cis 3 fluoro 2 pantene but the better name for this would be Z. Let's try to look at the second one. We have roughly pretty much the same as similar to the first one other than this orientation of this methyl group which is pointed up and this hydrogen is going to be pointed down so obviously your methyl is going to get uh, one just like we had done earlier this hydrogen is going to get two and onto the other side fluorine gets one and your ethyl group gets two and then uh, when it comes to naming or numbering, it's still going to be the same. You're going to have one, two, three, four, and five. And now you can see your opposite groups or ones are opposite to one another, twos are opposite to one another. So that's actually going to be a trans or you can call that a E. Okay, so I'm probably just going to copy this down here. Everything else is going to stay the same as for the name go. So just put that down here. And then this is just going to be trans or E. So I can call that E or I can call that trans. Okay, so that's how you're going to be naming this particular one. Okay, so let's look at uh, what's the difference I don't know where that come from is between those three. So I want to do that quickly. It's probably a better idea if you guys figure out what's going on with those three examples there. Um, so those two, actually, they're both going to be cis to one another. I mean, they're both going to be cis among those uh, substituents. They are just flipped. So this, the difference between those two is this one is rotated by 180 degrees. So when I number this, well, this is a, your methyl group, and this is your ethyl group. So I want to call this, since E comes before M, and uh, I want to call this one, two, three, four. So that goes back to the rule where you it doesn't really make a difference until you look at the alphabets. So it's going to be cis, one ethyl, and then four methyl cyclohexane. Okay, and then uh, since those groups are different to one another, you can also call that Z. Uh, so it's going to be the same name for the second one because in the second one, both of those are pointed back into the page. and the first one, both of them were pointed coming out of the page. Now, when you look at this third one, you can clearly see how this one of this ethyl is going back into the page, but your methyl is coming out of the page. So that's actually going to be trans to one another. So everything else stays the same. You're still going to be calling this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 here. And then it's just going to be trans, and the rest of the molecule is going to be the same. So I'll probably just copy this down here and put that here. So it's going to be trans, 1 ethyl, 4 methyl cyclohexane. So the bottom line here, if I say A, B and C. Your A and B are the same. But then the relation between B, C, B and C, and if I talk about, uh, or A and C, and even if I talk about B and C, uh, they are going to be your geometric isomers. Okay, so I have this last example here where um, if I want to name this, it's going to be 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, 4 here, and 5 here. So you got this uh, ring group here, and it's a 3-carbon ring, and it's going to be acting as a substituent because your longest chain is somewhere else here. 
Uh, so this particular ring is going to be called in a cyclopropyl. Since it's a three carbon, but it's in a cycle, so they call it cyclopropyl. And uh, is that going to be a cis or trans? So that's something you guys probably want to figure out. So you got a hydrogen there. So if I focus on this first one, between the cyclopropyl and between the carbon, who gets the priority? Well, this you have a CH3 group here, and then you got a carbon here and a carbon here. So you got more carbons onto the top group versus onto the bottom group. Or another way of saying, more hydrogens you have, less priority you're going to get. So this top one is going to get one, this bottom one is going to get two. And when you look at uh, the other side, your hydrogen is always going to get the lowest priority. So hydrogen is going to get two and this is going to get a one. So their ones are on the same side, twos are on the same side, so that's actually going to be a cis, or a better name would be a z. So when I call this, I have a cyclopropyl group on the second carbon, so it's going to be two cyclopropyl, and then it's going to be a pentene. We've got to specify the position of the double bond as well. So the double bond is at the second position, so it's going to be 2 pentene. And I can say that it's going to be a Z in the beginning. And uh, you might as well want to call this cis as well. Now you may see that as well, because the Z and cis are the same. And the rest of the molecule would be the same. Okay, um, the other thing you may have seen, I'm not going to name these guys, but just kind of be able to identify whether they are cis or trans. The fatty acids could be, like you may have heard of uh, um, trans fats and cis fats. Uh, trans fats, there's, there, you do have cis fats as well. Uh, so this particular one, when you look here, you got uh, those big groups that are going on the opposite sides and the small groups being on the opposite sides. So this one is going to be a trans fat part of the trans fat and this one right there you can see how your hydrogens are on the same side and your big groups are on the same side so this is going to be a cis form of the unsaturated fat so that's where they're going to be used um, make sure you're able to identify when you have a cis and when you have a trans and be able to identify the relation between those isomers if you have any questions feel free to leave any comments in the section below